In this video, we go through the five most important productivity tool categories that new university and college students should learn how to use. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we are meeting, my name is Oliver and I'm a master's student in economics at Aalto University in Finland. And on this channel we talk about education and early career development, specifically here in Finland. So if you are new here, do consider subscribing. Jumping right in, the first productivity category I recommend you to get familiar with is note-taking apps. Of course, some people still like to do notes with pen and paper, and just a disclaimer, this is perfectly okay, but I would still recommend that you at least consider moving to a digital system, because this makes it very convenient to store many years worth of notes and school materials without using any extra space. In addition, many apps and and tools that I'm going to mention in this video make it super easy to pull out specific information or files from years ago if and when you need them in the future. So personally, I've tried a bunch of different apps during my studies. In the first year, I started taking notes with Notability with my iPad. The reason I really enjoyed this was because Notability made it really easy to make handwritten notes, for example, on the top of my lecture slides, and this was especially convenient in mathematical courses where writing equations with Excel or other word-based apps was super slow, and keeping up with my professor was difficult. However, the problem with Notability at that time was that the Apple Pencil was not yet available, and making notes with your finger wasn't really that handy. However, I recently saw the video from Ali Abdal from 2019, where he really praises notability, especially when combined with an Apple Pencil, so apparently writing with a pen makes the app even better. Again, you don't necessarily have to use Notability specifically, but in my opinion, using an app that allows you to do handwritten notes on top of your lecture slides is a great way to do notes. However, if you don't like writing notes by hand, or if you don't have a tablet, I really recommend that you check out Evernote, Ulysses, and Notion. All of these apps are great for students, especially when you have a lot of writing to do. And in addition, these apps are great for cataloging and retrieving information. And I'm sure that at least one of them is going to be suitable for your needs. Out of these three, I've mostly used Evernote and Ulysses. However, I have to admit that I am not the best person to show how these apps work. So if you are interested in learning all the pros and cons about each of these apps, go and check out this video from Thomas Frank. The second productivity tool category I recommend you to check out is about Pomodoro tools. So if you don't yet know what Pomodoro is, here's a really rough summary. So the Pomodoro technique is a time management method that uses a timer to break down your work into smaller intervals, with usually 25 minutes of work being the traditional time used for one set. Between each interval, you take a short break, usually between three to five minutes, after which you continue studying until you've completed four intervals or Pomodoros. After all of these four Pomodoros, you take a longer break, for example for 25 to 30 minutes, and then you rinse and repeat. There are a lot of different apps and websites to be used with this Pomodoro technique. One of the most used ones is Forest, which you can download for iOS or Android. The idea with Forest is that you try to plant as many trees as possible by using the Pomodoro technique. This works by setting a timer for one Pomodoro, and if you exit the app before the Pomodoro is done, the tree dies and you feel sad inside. So basically the idea is to give you a visual incentive to keep focused and not to touch your phone while a Pomodoro is ongoing. For me personally, using forest works sometimes, but I have to say that most of the time I simply set a 25 minute timer on my Apple Watch so that I can simply put my phone in my bag and not to think of it at all. Anyways, I've used Pomodoro during my studies mainly when studying for book exams. So basically what I do is I have 25 minute stints of reading, a short break, 25 minutes of reading until I've done all the four Pomodoros. After I've done a full round, I've usually used a longer break either for lunch 
or in order to recollect what I've just read and learned. However, the problem with Pomodoro for me has been that many of these assignments in business school takes a lot of focus and breaking that focus only after 25 minutes simply doesn't work. Sometimes you have to take an hour long stint and this kind of breaks the Pomodoro technique. So even if it is a really good method, do not stick to it religiously. Anyways, I have a bunch of different Pomodoro tools and websites linked in the description box below so that you can find at least one that really works for you. All right, so the third category of tools are the project management tools, often also referred to as Kanban tools. Kanban is a lean method originally developed by an engineer at Toyota, but which is nowadays in wide use by both individuals and small and large organizations worldwide. So Kanban is a super simple but also an effective way of visualizing one's workflow. So while this technique can be used to manage large processes, most students use the simplest form of Kanban, which basically follows a to-do, doing, done workflow, where projects are broken down into individual tasks, and those tasks are then moved through this workflow individually, making it easier for you to follow how individual projects are moving over time. There are a myriad of great project management tools, but the tool that I've used the most is Trello. So Trello has a simple yet great user interface that makes following your projects really, really easy. It has a free version that is more than enough for most students, but you can also expand it with paid power-ups. However, if Trello isn't really the best app for you, there are a bunch of different Kanban tools that you can choose from. Some of the popular ones include Asana, Teamwork, and most notably Notion, which has become extremely popular in the last two years. Anyways, before we continue to the next section of this video, let me thank Alto University for their continuing support with this channel. As I've mentioned before, I've done both my bachelor's and master's studies at Alto University, and I really recommend that you consider applying there in the next application period. More information about studying at Alto through the links in the description box below. Moving on, the fourth productivity category for new students includes a choice between Google Suite or Microsoft 365. So basically the question is whether you want to use Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint, or Google Docs, Sheets and Slides. So for those of you who are still uninitiated, Google tools are pretty much copies of Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint, but the major difference is that Google Suite is only available online. So when choosing which products to use as your daily drivers, I really suggest that you take the following things into account. First of all, the pros about Microsoft tools are A, that the majority of Finnish universities provide their students with a free version of Microsoft 365. This means that you can get free access to both the offline and online versions of Excel, PowerPoint and Word, and all your documents can be stored in Microsoft OneDrive in order to keep them synced across your devices. The second reason I would recommend that you get used to Microsoft 365 over Google Suite is that the majority of large companies actually use Microsoft tools and getting used to them might suit you better when applying for work. However, while Microsoft tools are more packed with features, this also means that Word, Excel, and PowerPoint are pretty cluttered. And to be honest, they are way harder to learn to use because they have so many tools that you will never use and which you cannot, for some reason, remove from the toolbar. This is actually one of the biggest cons about Microsoft tools since they are simply just not as nice to use compared to Google's versions of the software. This is why I usually prefer to use Google's products for my private projects because they are simply cleaner and more distraction free. However, while Google's tools are more user friendly and easier to use, they too have some really big shortcomings. For example, one of the big reasons why I write all of my long form essays and for example, my thesis on Microsoft Word is that in Google Docs, for some reason, you cannot view your documents with two pages side by side. It's absolutely infuriating that you're stuck with just one page with all the space on the sides, especially when you're working with documents that are from 10 to 50 to 100 pages long, and when you simply want to see more of it at the same time. This is especially true when working with a laptop and when you want to maximize your usable screen space. 
Of course, these are just a few examples of the differences between these tools, and I really recommend that you learn to use both in order to figure out which works best for you. Also, do note that even if you get a free version of Microsoft 365 from your university, you have to start paying for it after graduation. Compare that to Google Suite, which is completely free to use. All right, so let's jump into the last productivity tool category that new students should learn, which is video conferencing tools. Especially considering the current situation in the world and the fact that most universities have been doing and might continue doing their courses online, this is a very important category to learn. Also, this is the only category where I actually recommend that you learn a specific tool, which is Zoom. This is because in Finland, most universities are using Zoom for most of their courses, as well as group exercises, personal mentoring, and even some exams. Not only is Zoom more user-friendly and stable compared to, for example, Skype or Google Hangouts, it also makes it super easy to record your meetings locally to your computer. In addition to Zoom being used for remote classes, it is also a great tool for teamwork. This is actually why I recommend that you learn how to use Zoom as a host, so that you know how to arrange and host team meetings before the next semester begins. Also, another great use for Zoom is recording interviews for your coursework and especially for your thesis. So while thesis interviews are usually done face-to-face, -face, the current situation has naturally forced, for example myself, to do my master's thesis interviews online. Having the possibility to record the conversation directly to your computer makes transcribing the interviews really, really easy. So while this might sound a bit silly for some first-year students, don't worry about it, you will understand what I mean when it is your time to write your thesis. Do note that not everything is perfect, and the one big drawback about Zoom from a student's perspective is that group meetings are limited to 40 minutes at a time. But this is actually really easy to go around by just starting a new meeting after your time runs out. All right, so these were the five different productivity tool categories that you should learn to use before the first semester of your university or college studies. Again, if you are interested in learning about the best tools from each category and how to use these tools, I have a list of great YouTube channels that focus purely on productivity tools in the description box below. Also, if you want to try any of the tools that I mentioned in this video, I have links to each in the description box below as well. Anyways, that is it for this video. If you found this video helpful, do give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who might also be interested in the topic. Also, if you have anything to ask about this or any other topic related to studying or working in Finland, please write them down in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.